Madam, Mr. Ewing has arrived. What a pleasure it is to see you back at the establishment. If you're looking for something that's not on our menu, all you need to do is ask. I'm sure there are a number of girls who'd be eager to cater to your brand of depravity. You've already tried that once, Madam Judy. As I'm sure you've guessed by my being here, I've had a pee at the card you're holding. Now, I know that girl you tried to set me up with was 16, but I didn't screw her. So you sent Candace after me to try and grab, shall we say, the remaining piece of the DNA puzzle you needed to put me in jail for bed and minor? If I set out to put you in jail, Mr. Ewing, you wouldn't be here smiling that insufferably smug smile at me now. Be that as it may, you and your son need to cease and desist coming after me. I now know that you own this fine establishment, and Candace will testify that you tried to frame me for something I didn't do. So, what do you say you put a leash on that son of yours, and I won't put a leash on you by throwing you in jail? Regardless of what you think about Harris, he did what he did to protect Emma. Emma is quite capable of taking care of herself. Fact is, I'm surprised you haven't given her the responsibility she deserves at Rylan Transport, given the disappointment in your son. I'm beginning to think that it's the women in your family that really have the heads for business. I am touched by the compliment, Mr. Ewing. So please forgive the terribly old-fashioned question I'm about to ask you. What are your intentions toward my granddaughter? I'm a married man, like you pointed out. So I cannot in good conscience tell you that my intentions are honorable. So let's be clear on this. Harris and I will do anything in our power to protect Emma. Just so that we're clear too, I will do anything to protect my family. Thank you so much for stopping by. 